In lecture two, we're going to begin talking about how we graph equations in two variables. So building on what we learned in lecture one and where we talked about what the rectangular coordinate system is, we're now going to plot points where the points actually satisfy a given equation. And the set of all points that satisfy an equation is going to basically be the graph. And then we're going to talk about some shortcut ways, some important points for us to graph whenever we're plotting the points of an equation. So to begin with, the graph of an equation, um, by definition, um, is the set of all points in the xy plane whose coordinates xy satisfy the equation. So when you're given an equation such as y is equal to 2x plus 8, not all points satisfy that. For example, if you plugged in the point 1 for um, x and 2 for y, that is not a point that satisfies that equation, right? Because 2 does not equal 2 times 1 plus 8. On the other hand, some points do. So if I were to plug in 1 for x, what do I get on the right-hand side? I, in fact, get a 10. So the point 2 comma 10 is on the graph, whereas the point 1 comma 2 over here is not on the graph. So how do we graph an equation like this? Well, we need to find as many points as we can to have a good understanding of what the line or curve, as the case may be, looks like. To do that, the standard approach is what's called the t-table or the value table. So if I were to build a table, x comma y, um, and pick some values for x and plug them in, see what I get for y, then I'll plot those points. That'll be enough for me to know what the graph looks like. Now, fortunately, in this case, we know from our, hopefully, we know from algebra that a line only needs two points to plot. So all I really got to do is plug in, say, let's say I plug in 0. What do I get for y? I get 8. Let's say I plug in 1 for x. I get 10. And where did I get these numbers? Well, I take the 2 times x, which is now 2 times 0, plus 8, and I got um, the 8. I don't know why I wrote 10. That's an 8. All right, I can actually erase that, so I'll fix that and give that the value of 8. On the other hand, if I plug in 1 for x and add that to 8, I get 10. So plotting these points is enough for me to graph the line on a coordinate system. Okay, so if I go over 1 and up 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Here's um, actually 0 and up 8. And over 1 and up 10. Then the line that goes through those satisfies that. Now, if I didn't know this was a line, I might have to graph additional points in order to know what the shape of this graph looked like. To plug in a 2, plug in a 3, maybe plug in negative 1, negative 2, plug in a lot of values over here. As a matter of fact, if you have a graphing calculator, what your graphing calculator is most commonly doing whenever you ask it to graph a function is exactly this, only it's got the computer chip inside for us to do this quickly. It can actually plug in hundreds of points. Um, if not maybe dozens of points um, at any given particular time and almost instantly will produce a graph for you by plugging those numbers into the y value or into the x value and calculating what y actually is. Now what happens if it's not a line? What do we need to do then? In this problem we are asked to graph um, 4x squared plus y is equal to 4. In this case, I'm going to do the same thing as I did before. I'm going to start with a value table and I'm going to plug in numbers. But this time I want to plug in uh, a few more numbers than just 2 because because of the square this is no longer just a line. It actually is a little bit easier to use this if I solve this for y first. So move the 4x squared to the other side. y is equal to negative 4x squared plus 4. Let's pick some values, 4x, and plug them in and see what we get. For example, if I plug in uh, 0 in 4x, what do I get? I have a negative 4 times 0 squared plus 4, which is going to give me a 4. Let's say I plug in the number 1. What does that do? 
Well, that's a negative 4 times 1 squared plus 4, which is actually 0, because that gives me a negative 4 plus 4 is 0. If I do 2, uh, plug that in, negative 4 times 2 squared plus 4, that's going to be negative 4 times 4, which is negative 16 plus 4, which gives me a negative 12. All right, and these numbers are going to get big pretty fast because of the square. Let's go off in the negative direction. So I did 0, 1, 2. What if I went negative 1? Yes, I get to choose these numbers. And sometimes the matter of choosing those numbers is so that I find enough good points to plot that I can figure out what the graph looks like in a moment when I actually plot these points. Plugging in negative 1, actually notice what happens. Because of the square, I actually still get a positive 1 times a negative 4 plus 4, so I get 0. Same thing that I got with a positive 1. And negative 2 is going to work the same way. Negative 4 times a negative 2 squared plus 4. This negative 2 becomes positive 4, so that's a negative 4 times positive 4, which is negative 16 plus 4, which gives me a negative 12 again. So let's plot these five points on our coordinate system and see what we get. One of these days I'm going to master drawing that exactly where I want it to be. But for now, let's see what we got. So over at 0, I'm at a height of 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. At 1, I'm at a height of 0. And then at, actually, I tell you what, let's move that 1 on the x-axis a little bit further over. i got to quit doing that. Come back. Come back to my pen. Sorry. Point. And then over at 2, I'm down 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. The point is right there. Now, if you'll notice, there's a bend to this. It doesn't go straight. It actually turns. The same thing's happening on the left-hand side. I've got a 0, and then I've got negative 12 down there. Now, some of you probably have seen um, parabolas before, so this is not going to be new to you to see this, but the shape is this U shape that looks like an upside-down kind of bowl or cup passing through those points right there, okay? It's called a parabola. But those points were enough for us to graph it. So our basic graphing strategy so far is to use our value table. Now, other strategy that you study in algebra and that we will use later on is to know something about the curve itself. So when we start graphing some trigonometric functions later in the term, we're going to use some things we know about the trig functions. After we've plotted the points, then we'll start studying specific things that we can find out. For example, you may know that whenever you look at a parabola, the number that's in front of it tells you two things. It tells you whether it's up or down. And it also tells you whether it's a narrow parabola or a wide parabola, you know, condensed or expanded. The number right here, the plus 4, tells you that the parabola has moved away from the origin. In this case, it moved up 4. Notice how that's exactly what's going on. I'm not asking you to know that at this point um, for this lecture series, but it's, uh, it's important to know that with some functions, we can shortcut what it takes to graph them by knowing something else about those particular equations or functions. It's also helpful in many cases to be able to identify some important points on a graph. Um, the first set of important points that we talk about are called the intercepts. Okay? The intercepts are basically where it crosses one of the axes. So you have a y-intercept, meaning it crosses the y-axis at some point, and you have an x-intercept, and it actually may have several x-intercepts. Um, the graph, the, sorry, the points where a graph touches or crosses a coordinate axis is called an intercept. If it crosses the x-axis, it's an x-intercept. crosses the y-axis, it's a y-intercept. Um, the easiest way to identify an intercept is if you actually already have the graph for the function. For example, in this picture below, I've given you the graph, and I'm asking you to identify the intercepts and label them as either x or y-intercepts. Now, let's break that down into two parts. What are the x-intercepts of this particular curve? Sorry, I can't write intercepts. Let me try that again. I-N-T-E-R-C-E-P-T-S. So where does it cross the x-axis? Horizontal axis, right there. 
right there. I've already got them circled for you. But what are the coordinates of those points? Um, you'll have negative 5, 0, 2, 0, and 4, 0. Have you noticed something about those? What do they all have in common? They all have a 0 in the y coordinate, which makes perfect sense because if it's on the x-axis, it's going to have a 0 for the y coordinate. So what are our y-intercepts? All right, that would be actually just this point right there, which is the coordinate 0, 2. Now, I made a comment earlier that I want to come back to. I mentioned that the functions that we work with right here are actually going to have only one y-intercept. And the reason why comes back to this concept of a function, which we're going to come back to in a later lecture. In fact, I think it's lecture four. Let me double check that. Yes, it is lecture four, a review of functions. Now, what if we're not given the graph? Well, look at the next example where it asks us to find one where we're given the equation. How are we going to do that? We're going to take advantage of a property we just discovered in that uh, in the previous example we noticed that all x-intercepts have a y-value of 0 and all y-intercepts have an x-value of 0. And that actually that makes sense because it comes from the fact of where these points are located. Being on the x-axis means the y-coordinate has to be 0. Being on the y-axis means the x-coordinate has to be 0. So to find x-intercepts we're going to let y equal 0 and then solve for x. In order to find the y-intercepts, we're going to let x equal 0 and solve for y. So for this example right here, to find the x-intercepts, we start by letting y equal 0. So that means x squared minus 0 minus 4 equals 0. Or x squared minus 4 equals 0. So x is sorry, x squared equals 4. You take the square root of both sides. Always remember to put the plus or minus when you square root both sides. So you get, or actually that's plus or minus square root of 4, which is plus or minus 2. So what are our two x-intercepts? Well, it's 2 comma 0 and negative 2 comma 0. You've got a positive and a negative. For the y-intercept, you're going to let x equal 0, so that's 0 squared minus y minus 4 equals 0. Minus y minus 4 equals 0 means y has to be 4. Right? Just move the y to the other side. Sorry, negative 4. You have y is equal to negative 4, which means your y-intercept for that function, without having to graph it, we actually know the y-intercept is going to be 0 comma negative 4. And that's how we find those particular points. Those are going to be very helpful. I mean, in fact, if you're, if you're graphing a function um, that you want to know something about or that you may already know something about, one of the things that you really want to find first is where it is across those axes. And so that's a great tool. And we're going to come back to it when we start graphing functions later on in the lecture series.